Her left side is slightly paralyzed and she cannot feel with her left bristles 300 cerebral children. Some call them spastics. The doctor at this special clinic at the children's hospital explains this to her mother, while the educational psychologist tests her ability. When this is known, he'll be able to discuss her future with doctor and parents. Many such children attend ordinary schools, then return to this clinic for regular treatment. This little girl's been coming ever since she was a baby. The cerebral palsied child knows what he wants to do, but cannot always do it. There may be nothing wrong with the thinking part of his brain, but the area responsible for controlling his movements has been damaged at birth or before. For some children, much more handicapped than these, an ordinary school is out the question. So for them, the Bristol Education Committee has provided this special day school, Claremont. Years ago, it was assumed that children like these could not be taught. Now we know that their erratic movements are only a failure to communicate between brain and muscle. It's like a switchboard in which the wires have got tangled. If they are to find a way round their difficulties, they'll need much individual attention, for they find it difficult to concentrate difficult to persevere. Colin knows the answer to his sum, so he pulls out the numbered pegs, then his teacher can write it down. Catherine has more control, but not enough to hold a pencil, so she does this. Peter's another who cannot write, but he too has been shown a way to express himself. For Mary, it takes a long time to produce a word, spelling it out letter by letter. But she knows what letter she's after, and she knows her teacher will be there to copy it down for her. It took her a quarter of an hour to write the first line. To finish it will need a lot more hard work and encouragement. Handicaps vary, so almost every child has to be taught in a different way. But all these children can read, and some of them are making such progress that they will later be transferred to ordinary schools. An occasional cerebral palsied child even reaches the university, so normal school work must not be neglected. For the more handicapped children, who will stay at Claremont until they are 15 or 16, practical training is also provided. In the specially designed housecraft room, Susan learns how she can cook and clean. Here, through the combined efforts of the occupational therapist and domestic science teacher, she is being helped towards independence in her everyday life. Many need the help of the speech therapist. This child would jerk about do you remember her with the pastry? But in this position, her involuntary movements are controlled. There's also a teacher of the deaf, for the brain injury can affect all the senses. The child watches and listens, then picks out the number she is saying. It's just like a game at first, but it's a game on which a great deal is going to depend. 
All the children have physiotherapy several times a week. Treatment has to start very early in life, for they have to be taught how to roll, to sit, to crawl, all in the correct way. Everyone wants to walk, but at present, only one in four of Claremont's children can do so. Perhaps in three or four years, this girl will be one of them. A child's chair and table must be exactly the right size, or she may sit awkwardly and become deformed. It's worth taking every care when so much is at stake. The physiotherapists also organize the movement of children outside the treatment room. John can only just walk, so he is being helped to get around another way. There are two main types of cerebral palsied children. First, the true spastics, like John, who have a stiffness in one or more of their limbs. Then there are the athetoids. They are easily recognized by their involuntary movements. Anne is one of them. Some have to be taught how to play, for they have never been able to experience the fun and games of ordinary children. Their parents often come to watch them, to give help and to receive it, so that lessons learnt at school can be continued at home. It's all good fun, but not like the real seaside, not like Weston. When we went to Weston, we went in a coach. We got in the coach and I sat next to Valerie. So when we got down there, we went in the water, but the grown-up said it was too cold. But I like going on the pier and going on the donkey the best. When they get back to Claremont, they'll go on talking about it for a long time. It'll give them something to write about, too. And if you can't write one way, well, you write another. Meanwhile, there's another task ahead. Feeding practice this time. Jimmy finds the thick-handled spoon easier to grasp. It may take an athetoid years before he can manage without these aids but he won't be satisfied until he can eat just like his ordinary brother and sister. When the children from the neighbouring junior school go home, even the youngest at Claremont knows it's time for lunch. A guiding hand from the speech therapist, and she's doing fine. Some 15 of the 38 children need help with feeding, so it's all hands on deck. Therapists, teachers, some of the parents, the headmistress. Everyone helps. After lunch comes a rest. Suitable positions are decided by the physiotherapists. Gradually, the children are learning to look after themselves and to help each other, like this athetoid girl and spastic boy. Claremont's children will never move like these, but it's a happy sight for them when the girls from the neighbouring junior school come up to share in their pack meeting. Today's rather a special occasion, for one little girl at least. She's just seven and a half, but she's carefully learnt what she must say, and now everyone's looking at her. Not an easy situation for a cerebral palsied child. A brownie gives in to the older folk. A brownie does not give in to herself. I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God and the Queen. 
to help other people every day, especially those at home. And so she is accepted, accepted by ordinary children. But what will happen when she leaves school? Will she be accepted then? If you're an employer, will you give her a job? If you're an employee, will you welcome her beside you? These children are finding it can be a two-way traffic. Just as the brownies came up, so these three are going down. Their neighbours are giving them a chance. Later on, will the rest of us do the same?